I've just uh, finished watching Smackdown uh, this past Friday, July 17th, and I must say, yet another great show. Two weeks in a row I've really enjoyed Smackdown. They've built up N uh, Night of Champions, uh, the upcoming pay-per-view, in a week. Really good. And seeing now that John Morrison has beaten um, CM Punk twice in a no title match, I have to say that if WWE does not give John Morrison title shot at SummerSlam facing the winner of CM Punk vs Jeff Hardy without having a number one contenders match I think WWE has really gone way out of line too far in, in having this number one contender this number one contender that because John Morrison should be an automatic uh, opponent for whom I believe will be CM Punk because I believe CM Punk will defeat Jeff Hardy and WWE will not give Jeff Hardy a title shot seeing that Jeff, uh, from what, what I have heard, has not signed an extension with the, with the WWE as of yet. Uh, and personally, I think CM Punk is a way better champion than Jeff Hardy. Uh, and I am what also makes me like CM Punk more watching SmackDown right now is the fact that WWE is rated PG and that every kid in the arena, all kids seem to be so fucking dumb because no matter what Jeff does, they share him. No matter what he does, they share him. Had this been TV TV 14, I'm meaning TV for older people, teens, people above 20, more like TNA Impact is of now as of now. I'm confident that CM Punk would have been the huge crowd favorite because they would have respected what he has done, his background and the fact that he has never fucked up the way Jeff Hardy has time over time over, over again. And um, Rey Mysterio also makes me sick. He's one of those wrestlers I cannot stand. Mainly also because he's some kind of an ultimate hero. He can do whatever he wants. There, there is no consequences for a Mysterio. Plus the fact that he acts this fucking image of Rey Mysterio acting like some sort of a cop around the ring. As soon as something happens, as soon as a heel does something, Rey is there to deal with it. He's there to argue with the one that he defines the culprit. In this case it was CM Punk shoving Jericho into Jeff Hardy. What's the deal? Moments earlier we, we had seen Jeff Hardy trying to throw um, Jericho right on top of CM Punk. Still how... yes I, yes, I know wrestling is scripted. It's not like I'm, I'm a mark or something like that. Although I try to be a mark because it's more funny to watch wrestling being a mark. But it, it's these fans that are so... That's why I also like Chris Jericho, because he tells the truth. Most fans are blind sheep. They share what they're supposed to share in WWE's book, and they boo what they're suppo supposed to book in WWE's book. And yeah, that's the, that's the case in TNA right now too, but uh, it's so simple booking in WWE, and I can't remember being that stupid when being a kid myself. Uh, enough of that great main event. They're really serious about uh, Dolph Ziggler. I think it's obvious. Uh, Chris Jericho taking both the Swan Swanton Bomb. He's taking Ray's finisher. And he would have been pinned with all likeliness hadn't it been for Ziggler twice saving him. So Ziggler is the big game saver. Ziggler is, along with John Morrison on SmackDown, moving up towards the top ranks. That's really good. He has an intercontinental title shot coming up at Night of Champions and odds are that he might also walk out of the pay-per-view the tag team champion as Jericho will probably as it looks right now choose Ziggler as his partner and I mean what better partner could Chris Jericho get after we've seen last last week's show now this Friday Ziggler is saving his partner twice and I can really see that's what Jericho wants from, from a tag team partner not someone like Edge who he is pissed off at for getting injured. Speaking of Edge, it looks like he will make his face turn while being away and return as a face. The plans were for Edge to have a long-term face swift 
and be face about the end of the year had he not been injured. Uh, Kane versus R Truth. Kane wins another match. Uh, this is a way to build up Kane in his monster feud against the Great Kelly. I don't know when the two will face. Summer Slam, maybe. Uh, I kind of like that feud. Good build up. Kane finally now is beating R Truth. He bet Ray coming back, and he. Pff, I don't remember who he defeated last week. Short memory. Heart Dynasty and uh, Natalia beats Crime Time and Eve Torres. Great swinging clothesline by Natalia. And uh, I'm a big Heart Dynasty fan, hence I liked seeing Heart Dynasty win there. And for, from my perspective, this feud should go on for several weeks because they could have singles matches, they could have E versus Natalia. This is a great way to see two factions uh, feud with each other, having matches, long series of matches, and they are putting on great matches as well. Uh, that's about enough of that, I think. Uh, on a side note, as I said, I think SmackDown is really shaping up now. SmackDown is more about having good matches, good, uh, they put up great shows, great efforts, such as John Morrison and his matches. However, I think they are over pushing Morrison into matches because it feels like he has already faced everyone on SmackDown. They should put a little more build up into the matches. Uh, not giving him high profile matches or high profile match. He's a great wrestler. He will go far, and as I said, with all likeliness, he should have a title shot, an automatic title shot, after his wins over CM Punk twice at SummerSlam, without having to go through a number one contender match. Other than that, I could just uh, talk quickly about Victory Road. Tonight, it's Victory Road. I'm looking forward to that like hell. It's, as I said, I like TNA Impact right now. The way they are projecting the product against older fans, making it more interesting, more intellectual, uh, and seeing also since TNA is now delivering better and better answering to the hype of the pay-per-view that they built up so great. I think it's it could be a great pay-per-view tonight. And they also managed to, to project that feeling, at least onto me, that Victory Road is really going to decide the future of TNA. I think Main Event Mafia is going to win all the titles, they're going to be an all title faction and uh, we're also going to see the debut of uh, Taz, Taz who is the um, secret advisor of Samoa Joe according to the rumors and uh, for what we saw on Impact uh, last Thursday, this Thursday three days ago we saw at the end of the show a video package airing on the on their Tron number 13 it's gonna be TAS it's no news really so yeah great great Smackdown show tonight great matches not that many matches but they were really good I like them all and I think Michael Hayes is really doing right good very good as of now Brian Jurvitz on uh, Raw is getting a lot of criticism for being too much into the humor entertainment part, but it's Vince wanting him to do that, so I like that show too, and I, I encourage people to watch this upcoming Monday with CC Top as the special guest hosts. Thank you very much for watching, have a great evening.